The name's Biggs. Jack Biggs. You're probably aware the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, is being released at the end of this month, which is so exciting and very long waited. So why am I dressed in a suit? And what has this got to do with watches? Well, James Bond films have always had a very long association with very expensive watches that have been featured in all the films right from the very start. A Rolex Submariner was featured in the first film, Dr. No. The picture behind me right here is the Rolex Submariner. A Pulsar LED watch was starred in Live and Let die and a Seiko LCD digital watch was seen in The Spy Who Loved Me. I feel like all these films have very tongue twister names. Other watch brands that have been featured in these films include Breitling, Gruen, I think that's how you pronounce it, and most recently Amiga. And the new Amiga watch is featured in the new film No Time to Die which comes out at the end of this month and retails at a whopping £7,880 which although is a stunning timepiece is out of most people's price range. So with this in mind we thought it would be fun to take a look at more affordable James Bond watch lookalikes. To begin let's take a look at that Amiga that we've just spoken about and find out what makes it so incredible. It is actually quite a simple watch it isn't a chronograph and it doesn't have a date feature. As it's a diver's watch, it does have a rotating bezel and a screw down crown and is water resistant to 300 meters. And a Milanese bracelet completes the look. Some of these watches that are featured in this video will look like watches over the years of James Bond. Without further ado, here are our top three James Bond watch lookalikes that are considerably more affordable. Firstly, we have a Seconda watch, which is very similar to the Seamaster. Well, not too similar as they do have a few differences. First look, it has a 40 millimeter millimeter case so slightly smaller than the Amiga by two millimeters not much difference in size one difference you wouldn't be able to tell from just looking at the watch maybe from afar you might be able to and that's the material the Amiga is made out of titanium which kind of explains the price and this Seconda watch is actually manufactured with stainless steel obviously when you have the watch in your hands you can tell the difference in materials just by the quality of the build the Seconda does have a black circular dial with rectangular buttons instead of numbers which the Amiga also has the Amiga Amiga does have a mixture of circular and rectangular buttons in the color gold. So if you take a look at the Seconda, it does have a bit of gold around the outline of the buttons that have a bit of silver in there as well. They also do have numbers around the bezel. On the Seconda, there are three sub dials, which the Amiga doesn't actually have. That's because it is a dual time watch, a feature that James Pond would actually find very useful as he's always in different time zones. It sounded like you said James Pond. Yeah, it did a bit actually. I think I said Pond. <laughs> Moving on to the Milanese bracelet, they look pretty much the same, just built with different alloys. The Seconda does only have a 50 meters of water resistance, but if you don't wear your watch in water or you're not a diver, it doesn't really matter. Overall, this watch is lightweight and good quality and retails at $79.99, which is great value for money and means you'll have more money to spend on vodka martinis, shaken, not stirred. Next, we have the Spinnaker Dumas, which has a better build like the Amiga with practically all the same features. It has a 44 millimeter stainless steel case, whereas the Amiga has a titanium 42 millimeter case but it is a little bit more heavier compared to the Seconda. When you look at both these watches together, the Spinnaker doesn't have bold shoulders like the Amiga. Because the Amiga is manufactured from a titanium, it is also a slightly different shade of silver compared to the Spinnaker. Both have no numbers and a mixture of circular and rectangular buttons, but on the Amiga, it does have the added color of gold in and around the dial. They both have the Milanese bracelets made out of different materials, of course, but it's not something you can tell by just looking at the watch from afar. The Spinnaker is also a water resistant distance to 300 meters, just like the Amiga. This watch retails at 315 pounds, which is an incredible price for such a stylish and brilliantly manufactured timepiece. Overall, this is a great looking watch, very bold and definitely one that really stands out. There are a few differences in colors, but has the same features. We do have the same watch with a black dial like the Amiga on our website, which I will link down below in the description. Lastly, we're gonna be taking a look at the watch from the James Bond Thunderball movie. So we're moving from the new movie to a little bit of an older one. So this movie was re- <laughs> Please don't fall. This movie was released back in 1965. So we're gonna be taking a look at a more vintage styled watch. The original Breitling Top Time Chronograph watch was actually sold back in 2013 for £103,875, which is crazy. That is a lot of money for a watch. 
But then again, Sean Connery did actually wear this watch. So the closest look alike we have here is the Briston Diver Pro, which has a more modern look compared to the original Breitling, but still has that vintage style. It has a 44 millimeter stainless steel square outer case with a circular dial, which I know is a lot bigger compared to the original watch, which is a 35 milli mill millimeter, sorry. But if you look at the picture that I have here on the screen, it does look a lot bigger on the screen than it does in person. They both have a black dial, whereas the Briston does have a bit of added color on the inner and outer of the dial. So if you look at the original, it's more silver, whereas in this one, you've got the color orange, you've got a bit obviously the greeny yellow color in there as well. Going on to the strap, I couldn't find a better photo, but from what I can see, it has a single link bracelet. In contrast, the Briston has a contemporary black rubber strap. All the James Bond watches I've spoken about in this video have one thing in common, and that is they are all divers watches. Like the Amiga, this watch also has a 300 meters of water resistance. Overall, this watch is built really well and has a high quality rubber strap. It looks really nice on with a suit as well. It's still giving you that vintage look, but also making you look really smart and formal. This watch also retails at 495 pounds. And there we have it, our best three lookalike James Bond watches. I really hope you enjoyed this different styled video. I had so much fun filming it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to let us know down below in the comments and give this video a like. Thanks for watching. Bye.